Amen. And so the news I've got to share with you today as a prophet is uh, Jesus is coming back again. Yeah, you know, so we don't celebrate this morning. We'll take a different angle of the Advent because you've heard Advent a million times about little baby Jesus in the manger and baby Jesus is going to come to us and we sit around the Christmas tree and say, oh, holy night, we think of a little baby in the manger and Mary rocking the little baby. Well, you know what? All that's over with. That's good stuff. It's a part of who we are. But you've got to beware, be on the watch, because he is going to return again. So I celebrate when I light my lights and go, Woo, oh boy, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is going to be with us. Jesus is going to return. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be before I finish this sermon. Wow, that Jesus is coming. There's good news in that. He proclaimed that. So I want my joy back. And for lots of times in the season, the Christmas, we don't have any joy. I know people in the church wouldn't know joy if they run into it. If you love Jesus, tell your faith. You know, if you've got joy, you should share joy. Oh, my God, we should be full of joy. So turn to your neighbor and say, I want my joy back. You might say, well, I'm a little embarrassed by that. It's crazy. This guy next to me, I never met him before. He's good looking. I might want to date him, you know. That's how you meet people in church. God's always working. You know, God might have brought you here today to find a boyfriend or girlfriend. That's for those of you that are not married. Don't get confused. But you know, it's, Christmas is a fun event. There's some tradition that you've experienced in your life that you remember. You go back and you dig up these memories when you were small, and they impact the Christmas that you have now. Even you young, small youth out there, you remember when you were little, and you were decorating the Christmas tree. So you had this ritual that inaugurates Christmas into your front room. There's something that you always do, that some family member always does. Like in our family, we would always, the kids would put on their pajamas, and we would go get a tree. And got to have a real tree. My wife struggles with that. I want a real tree. You know, I don't want a plastic tree. But we end up getting, you know, a plastic tree a lot. <laughs> but I got a real one this year. I stole it from the Christmas tree lot. Not really. No, I didn't. I got a real one this year, though. I feel like I stole it. I got a good price on it. But for some of us, it's hanging the greens. It's the putting up the trees. It's the decorating the cookies. It's all about twinkly lights, putting up the ornaments, decorating outside. It's a lot of fun. For like Lauren Mullins, you know, Miss Mullins. How many went to Miss Mullins' house and got all those cookies? Raise your hand high. Don't you be ashamed. You know, she's got this table in her home that she invites you. Her Sunday school class she invited over. And they, they had like 90 jars of cookies. Glass jars about this tall. I think about that now. I'm a cookie man. Glass jars this tall, about this big around. They're clear, and they were full, like 90 jars full of cookies. And she says, come over and have some cookies. Well, you know, lo and behold, God's so good. You know, I'm on my diet still. Hadn't cheated yet. And there were no cookies left when I got there. One little crumb in one of the jars because the scouts came and got a lot of them, she said. But, you know, it's great. She experiences, she brings Christmas to many people in her class, into her home, through cookies. And whatever event, it's okay. Some of you are going to listen to music. You're going to put, you know, Frank Sinatra in or Bing Cosby or, or whoever, you know, is the hottest hit for you. Elvis, I don't know. Even me, you get a tape today, you can hear me sing White Christmas. But, it, but, you know, it's something personal, and it ushers Christmas into your front room or into your spirit. So whatever the event is or activity that makes Christmas for you, it's a result of a rage of joy, a surge of joy to be joyful in your soul and sanctified in your spirit and to be, have peace in your heart. Oh, man, joy. We've got to get our joy back. You know, you think about this. You know, we had some ornaments we put up in our Christmas tree. My little kid, Jason, when he was small, he stopped doing this a couple of years ago. My son, Jason, who leads the choir here, and my daughter, Gentry. You know, we had this little ritual. We'd get the ornaments out. You know, it'd always be one broken. You know, he'd be dealt with that. And he got it. So we'd put duct tape on the back and fill it with newspaper and tissue paper and hang that thing. We didn't want Grandma to come home and think we broke our ornament. We didn't like it anyway, but we put it up there, and it was pretty. I'm just kidding you. But we put it up there, you know, and, and they had so much fun. And we get all the tree decorated, and they go into this ritual. And it was jumping up and down on the couch. They would jump as high as they could jump so they could see the top of the tree. They wanted to see what it looked like from the top. Look, so, like, this is little rituals we do, and I take the turkey, and I put it, the whole turkey, put my hand in the turkey, and I carry the turkey around, and I talk to people. With, and we do it every year. i got videos of it. It's hilarious. But, you know, it's like, and we go, I sing, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We do it with the, and they all dance, and I hold the wings out on the turkey and lead the choir. And, 
But it ushers joy into, into the lesson. Have you ever let yourself jump for joy? Have you ever jump for joy? What gets you up on your feet? What, what gets you up in the air? Gator game. A gator game will get you up on your feet. I mean, you go to the ball games, you watch, you, I see my parishioners on television, they don't know it, they're jumping up and down, you know. I mean, I've never seen such grown men that like idiots in my life. I'm right there with them at a ball game. We're jumping up and yelling at the guy, get him, get him, like they, like they can hear us way down on the field. But it gets you up on your feet, you get involved, and you get excited. It's wonderful. Oh, you celebrate that, but you know, but we can't celebrate that way in the church, it doesn't look like. You can only celebrate things like that at at ball games, and maybe our kids can celebrate a little bit of that. In fact, today's gospel lesson is about a child who jumps for joy. Oh, my God, Jesus and John, they get this joy thing going on. Jumping for joy before you're even born. Imagine that, jumping for joy before you were ever born. This is the first prophetic act that ever happens in the Bible. This unborn John the Baptist is leaping inside of his mom because he's gotten close to Jesus. Doesn't that tell you something about your theology? That when you get close to Christ, you should jump for joy. Shouldn't we be joyful people? We got some good news. I don't have any bad news for you this morning. I'm sorry. I read to you out of the book. It says the gospel. The gospel means the good news. I got good news for you. I got good news for you. Jesus is coming back. He's not coming back as a baby. He's coming back as a grown person on a big white horse. He's going to take us home. Woo! That's good news. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, the Messiah himself is now... You know, at this moment, waiting to come back one more time. Think about Jesus. You wonder what Jesus might look like now that he's grown up. Now he's not a baby anymore. You know, Hollywood hadn't done a real good job of this. You know, Hollywood, they always portray Jesus as this slim, handsome, maybe almost, guy. Maybe Jason size. And he never smiles. You know, I don't understand that. He doesn't smile. He walks like this in his movies real slow like he's got arthritis. You know what I'm talking about? And, and he's always sitting at tables and speaking like this, like a statue. I just don't believe that. I wish they'd make a Hollywood movie about Jesus. Suppose Jesus looked like me. Can you imagine that? A little fat, round guy. I mean, really, suppose Jesus, suppose he looks like me or one of us. But suppose he is short, you know, and, and, and maybe a little overweight. Wouldn't it be nice? He's in heaven eating cupcakes and all these great people that have gone on there to be with them from our church. Maybe you gain weight in heaven. I don't know. But the fact is that we, Jesus wasn't Santa Claus, right? So Hollywood's never going to make a movie about Jesus smiling. He only looks like he might have ate a sour pickle. So you look at Santa Claus for a moment. Just think about Santa Claus. You know, no wonder we need Santa Claus. Santa makes you happy. I mean, who doesn't go to the mall and stand in that line with your kids? And I, I've heard my wife say, boy, that Santa's cute. I said, how could Santa be cute? She said, well, I mean, I mean, he's a pretty Santa. Oh, isn't that a beautiful Santa? You know, and, and, and you get so excited. Where are you going? Oh, we're going tonight in the mall to take the kids to see Santa Claus. Everybody's so excited. The kids can't sleep that night. And they're, they're misbehaving. You're beating them all the way to Santa. Isn't it the truth? I mean, this is, let's just be truthful. Let's don't lie to one another.